Shades of Benga Online presents highlights from the story of Kenya's popular music in the 70-year period between the end of the Second World War and 2016. The series draws its inspiration from the definitive book Shades of Benga by Ketebul Music. Good evening and welcome to Shades of Benga Online. In this episode, we discuss rumba in Nairobi. And to play us in is Orchestra Mangelepa with Marie Claire of Baba Gaston. I'm your host, Topi Liambila. Clara, 
That was Marie Clara by Baba Gaston, performed by Orchestra Mangelepa. Okay, to discuss Shades of Benga, Rumba in Nairobi. We have on the panel today a very interesting panel, and I believe that you know you viewers will enjoy yourselves. In my immediate left is Nachaz Mudemba, is a musician of old repute was played, you know, with many bands, Trippers, Ruddy, Blue Stars, and is here to give us something about, like, what it felt like those days, and probably, like, give us an outlook on what it is today. And next to him, of course, is um, Tabu Osusa, who is the executive director of Catable Music, and also the co-author of Sheds of Benga, the book. And he's our panelist here also to shed... Uh, to give us his experience, what he knows about rumba in Nairobi City. And at the, my very far end is Dr. Tom Odhiambo of the University of Nairobi. Today, he is coming in as a rumba enthusiast, somebody who knows about the music. So, gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. I would like uh, uh, Tabu Susa to kick us off on this show and... We are looking at rumba in the city. But how did rumba come in the city? How it is? Because we are talking about an era, like the 70s era, which, uh, which, uh, which is normally referred to as the golden era of music and fashion and everything. But now we are talking about rumba. How did the rumba music build up in Nairobi City? Uh, thank you, Topi. The 1970s was definitely... Uh, the golden era of uh, Kenya's music. And I'm here, I'm talking in terms of uh, production and performances, especially with the rumba music, and which was boosted by the arrival of Congolese musicians from Zaire. By then it was, no, it was Zaire, now it's known as DRC. So there are so many bands that uh, arrived in Nairobi, via Uganda, some came through Tanzania and settled here. So how early was that, uh, uh, Dr. Dr. I would like you to jump in here? Because we are talking about, you know, the arrival of the bands. Yes. So we had a stage in Nairobi, yes. which also involved rumba. Is that, yes. am I yes. correct to say that? Yes, yes, sir. So what was, what was the scene like from your point? Well, I mean, I mean to go back to what Tabi is saying, I think migration is a very natural instinct. I mean, human beings, 
although we, they say they are social beings, where people really love to inquire what is behind the fence, you know. And if you discover what's behind the fence, again, there is an instinct to inquire what is next. So I think we can go into what were the circumstances. The 70s, uh, yes, it, it, it was a, a wonderful time um, in Kenya, in many parts of Africa, but probably not so much of a wonderful time in the Congo. In many parts of Africa, there were coups, uh, there was uh, economic turmoil uh, because globally um, an, an economy that was reliant, an African economy that was reliant on raw exports eh, would suffer exchange uh, rates issues and that had, the economics had uh, um, um, an effect on the politics. And the politics had an effect on social life. And um, men would naturally then try to go out and seek a livelihood. So we are talking about these musicians arriving here in a way as one way of seeking a livelihood. Like Taboo said, they would move into Uganda because Uganda is next to the DRC. They would move into Rwanda, Burundi, and Tanzania. And the Kenyan shilling was strong. The Kenyan economy was seductive. Our life was probably way, way better in this country than very many of the neighboring countries. So there was a natural kind of inclination to kind of move into Nairobi. And Nairobi was the epicenter of art and culture in the region. And what was the deal? Because many people have opined that musically speaking, the Congo and the Western, the Western region of Africa was more developed music-wise than Kenya. So you are saying about like that kind of what prompted, what exactly prompted these guys to move? Because we did not just have the Congolese, we also had the Tanzanian yes. musicians also coming up during that era. Yes. So what were they coming? What, what actually pulled them in? So there's the logic of demand and supply and the logic of Nairobi, just as the logic of Mombasa. Remember that a lot of Tanzanian bands actually played in Mombasa. They still do, by the way. A lot of Tanzanian bands play in Mombasa. One, because it's nearer, but two, because of cultural sophistication. So Nairobi as a city, I mean, there is a saying out there, Nairobi is not our home. It's a place for everybody. And when you have a melting pot, the kind of people love new things. There was nobody who could own Nairobi. Uh, in West Africa, if we went amongst the Fulani, the Igbo, the Hausa, uh, you went to, uh, to Congo, there are settlements, there are regions that were settled by kind of a single group with its own cultural production. But Nairobi was fairly sophisticated. You could find a European here, an Arab here, a Goan here. You could find a Luo here, a Luya here. And they may not even have identified themselves as a Luya or a Luo. Honestly speaking, in Karyoko, people saw themselves as Nairobians. You understand? And so um, the idea that the radio could bring a new sound into your house. You really wanted to know that. And it's not like people sleep. There are people who know and think about how you make money. And you only, the only thing you needed was to just bring one band to play or one guy to arrive in the city here and speak in French or speak in Lingala or speak in Kiswahili that is not local and it creates kind of has a ripple effect. And the people who actually played in real bands here will tell you that you could be singing in English and the way you make the song uh, slightly fanciful is to throw in a Kigiriyama word or a Kikamba word uh, and it becomes some kind of fashion. You can own it. Yes. Now, Taboo, the rumba scene, the Nairobi rumba scene, which is our subject topic to, tonight, received a big boost in the 70s from visiting bands. Who are these bands, or who are these musicians, and where did they come from? Yeah, you're right. There were quite a, a number of um, musicians who uh, made uh, Nairobi their base, and most of them came from Zaire, or DRC, as it is uh, known today. Most of these uh, bands uh, came from eastern uh, Zaire, and they arrived in Nairobi via uh, Tanzania for the reason that Tanzania is very close to Nairobi anyway. And Tanzania neighbors uh, Zaire. And some of them, while some of them came from 
Kinshasa via Uganda. But the, the groups, uh, notable groups that arrived from uh, uh, Zaire were High Fives, Kange Brothers, Baba Gaston, Banangenge, Boma Liwanza, Air Bantu, Lenoir, Viva Makale, Likinua, Bane Kanga, which was led by Nana Kumu, you remember? Yes, yeah, I remember. And among the, the first ladies was, uh, was a band leader. And I think uh, there were quite a number. But and uh, Nana Kumu also came from Zaire. Yes, I know many people But think, many people uh, think, yeah, maybe you could just uh, give us something. Yeah, like many that. people think that uh, she was uh, Kenyan, yeah. by the name Nana Kumu. Specifically, they thought she was uh, a Luo. Yeah. She was a Luo, yes, but a Luo from Congo. <laughs> from Congo. <laughs> they oh, are okay. called the Aluru or Balulu. Okay. In fact, remember, after she left Nairobi, she went and, and rejoined uh, or joined OK Jazz. So what is it taboo we had in Nairobi that attracted these people? Because with that numbers, those numbers of the musicians who came from the Congo in the 70s, what is it that attracted them to Nairobi? I think Nairobi at that time had a very good um, music setup. The infrastructure was just marvelous. We had uh, uh, multinational record labels based in, uh, in Nairobi. Um, the, the major one being uh, uh, Phonogram, which later came to be known as uh, Polygram, and they even had a record, in, a record plant, you know, so that they could make vinyl records and cassettes. The other uh, uh, multinational record label was uh, EMI, and then uh, there was also CBS. But there were also other small ones that were there. Sapra also was another record plant. So it was easier for people to come to Nairobi to record and also have their vinyl records and cassettes made in, in, in Kenya. And of course on that line also, we, it's not just uh, Congolese musicians who came here. We had other musicians also coming in from like our neighboring countries. Yeah, in fact, interestingly, people think that uh, Tanzanian musicians settled here. Actually, they did not. But they always came to record, and then their music was so popular on radio that people thought they lived here. Guys like Morogoro, I mean, they visited here and, uh, and toured and yeah, recorded, yeah. but they always went back. The only Tanzanian group that actually settled in uh, Nairobi, if I remember well, is uh, Simba Wanyika. Because then they, they came, I remember, they came from Jamhuri, I think. Yeah, from Jamhuri, just. Yeah, they came Jamhuri and changed jazz. their name to Simba Wanyika. They moved to Mombasa, then back to Nairobi. How were these bands received? Because like, okay, fine, we talk about the rumba scene. Can we comfortably say that when the Congolese musicians were coming to Kenya, that they found a music scene? Did we have the rumba music scene set in Nairobi, or can we say that it's the Congolese musicians who brought the rumba scene to Nairobi? What's your take on that? I think, uh, as I, I said in my previous episode, Nairobi, or Kenyans as a whole, had uh, a rumba culture, I mean, dating way back from World War II, when Fundi Konde came from uh, World War II, and they came with the guitars and started playing more influenced by Afro-Cuban rumba. And then in the 1950s, the earliest Congolese to come was uh, uh, Jabos Kumwenda yeah. and Edward Masengo. And they introduced a faster rumba. So when these uh, Congolese uh, musicians were coming in the 1970s, they already found a ready-made kind of um, um, atmosphere, yeah, atmosphere for, for them. So okay, fine, that was also... Jean Bosco Mwenda, those were the uh, initial ones. Then, but the big band, you know, the, the ones that actually stayed for long, uh, we're looking at something like Baba Gaston. Yeah, Baba Gaston stayed for long because he had, he had been here earlier, I think, uh, to record in the late 60s, but he came back now in the 70s to settle, um, to stay. And, that's, uh, and actually, it's, 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 it's them, it's Baba Gaston, whose offshoot, Mangle Pa, became like, like one of the biggest bands. Uh, in, uh, in Kenya. So his influence in the Kenya scene was very big. You, you have told us, uh, Tabu, that uh, you know, these bands, when they came to Kenya, they say Congolese bands, and they were coming to play rumba, and they also found that actually rumba, there was a rumba culture in Nairobi and in Kenya as a whole. Now, when these bands came in, it meant that they were kind of like displacing 
the bands that were playing rumba and enjoying the audience here. So how was this? What happened with our local musicians who were playing rumba up until the time the you know the the you know the Congolese musicians came in? At first, when the Congolese musicians came, of course the fans loved them. The Kenyan fans love uh, Congolese music up to date. So when they arrived, uh, the first of them, the few, when, when the first few arrived in the 1970s, even the local musicians actually liked them because you know they brought a lot of professionalism uh, in, in the, the, the way of playing. They were flashy, so they even made our local uh, musicians actually up their game. But yeah. when the number became big, then the locals felt threatened because they could see that these musicians were really uh, invading their space. So there was a, a lot of tension. Though the, the lucky thing with the locals, so they decided to move away from popular clubs. They decided to move to hotels to play grill music. I think that was their answer to the Congolese. Um, or oh, to the Congolese influx or whatever yeah, you can call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We take a break as we listen to Ilunga Ilunga by Baba Gaston, performed by orchestra Mangelepa. Masikini, masikini, oh, 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 utaruti siku ganye, eh, Ok. 
That was Ilunga Ilunga of Baba Gaston, performed by Orchestra Mangelepa. Charlie, the revelers you guys were playing for already had heard about the Congolese music. Mm. These people knew that your revelers knew about the music. What happened later is that these guys came in numbers. And they were actually, when you look deep into them, they were actually hustlers. They were actually trying to find life somewhere. You know, I think they had war in their countries or something like that. So they wanted a place where they could settle. And they come with this Lingala music, rumba, which was catching up because it's been played over the radius. And then secondly, they have to survive. So they have this like 15, 18 piece band and they want to play in a club. And most clubs then used to have musicians, session musicians, not recording artists. People who have been paid to play. To, to play, to, to entertain, play, to entertain, entertain the evening, people. To entertain the revelers. Yeah. Every so weekend or every, every day. Every weekend or every day. Most, in fact, most groups used to play every day. There was plenty of work then. And now these guys come in, 
and they come with that fashion and pride of theirs and they come with this new music which is Lingala that has been kind of catching up in Kenya and then secondly they became cheaper that's the, that's the Tokyo, the money. The money. Money, money. Yeah, is, uh, yeah because These guys used you to, are paid. Yeah, yeah. So obviously you're going to share a bit of that cake. Yeah. Most clubs, I can remember in River Road, used to hire, like, employ a musician. On a pay, monthly pay. So you were employed. They were employed. Okay. Now these guys come and they say, okay, fine. We play this, which is a new thing, in thing. And even a club owner would want to have something new. So these guys come in, they play, they attract crowd, and they become cheaper. So you, as a Kenyan musician, akuna kazi. The drama akuna kazi. And then slowly, slowly, that's when people realize, wow, these guys are taking over. Wow. Yeah, exactly. These guys are a danger. They're, they're a not, danger, they're not yeah. just visiting. They're not visiting. They're, they're coming to take away our, yeah. our bread. These guys used to live in a, rent a house and maybe have like a, a room with maybe five or six people spent, you know? They, and, and, slowly, most, and most of them didn't have their families here. Yeah, they didn't yeah, have their families here. They could live so on could the cheap. On, yeah. yeah. But you had a, a wife, a wife children. kid, and then you have a monthly salary that you're comfortable, yeah, you're comfortable with. with. And then uh, all of a sudden now this guy has taken over. But I remember so, even what Charlie was saying earlier on, uh, when I was uh, talking earlier, that uh, there was a lot of tension also among the Kenyan musicians, but they appealed to the immigration department to deny uh, more, more uh, Congolese the work, work permit. Didn't some Kenyan bands also then adapt and start to kind of do their quote-unquote false uh, Lingala stuff? I mean, because this, this is almost natural, right? What in their musicians who then decided, we also, we, we're going to learn this. <clears throat> we're going to learn, it's the show. I mean, this happens today, right? So you're listening to kind of a, a Luo band play in a club today, and half the music, they're actually tuning it and singing it in Lingala. Actually, yeah, the, yeah. yeah. I mean, mm. the Kenyans also, I would say, not really necessarily singing Lingala. But they adapted playing rumba well. The style, like, yeah. Groups like Hody Boys were, were playing very yeah, good Juma rumba. Uh, Maroon Commandos was playing yeah. very good rumba. Even Air Fiesta did. Air Fiesta, Fiesta yes. Cavalias. Yeah. 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 Exactly. They, they played, actually played Congolese music very well. At some yeah. point, if you listen to the Maroon Commandos sound, yeah. you wouldn't know that uh, <laughs> these are local Kenyan army boys yeah. who originally were singing in Kiswahili. Of course, with adaptation, you would imagine that it actually is, is a Zairean band. And that, that was the thing about Nairobi. That Nairobi, uh, the tastes of the revelers, the fans, kind of pushed you into those directions that you got to kind of change to keep up with the times. Because Nairobi was a very, uh, was a very active city. Um, um, the, the, there's a time in the 70s, 80s, you couldn't drink some whiskey in, in Dar es Salaam. It was in short supply. Either because of foreign exchange or the government didn't think that everybody could import it. So this was a place to come to. I remember Uganda with its political turmoil. This was a place you came to. There were a lot of exiles here as well from all these other places. So naturally you had to adapt. You had yeah. to change your sound. But you remember also what I'd said, I think, in, in uh, the earlier episodes, that Kenya, uh, had a culture of rumba, yeah. coming from uh, the Fundikondes yes. after World War II. Yes. So actually adapting to rumba was, yeah, to the Congolese type of rumba, which was just a little faster than the, the Afro-Cuban yeah, the, rumba, yeah. was easier for Kenyans. And because they were also singing in Swahili, a language that the locals could understand. And uh, there's always this um, uh, uh, notion that um, there's a genre called Lingala. Lingala is just a language. The, the genre is rumba. Yes. So Kenyans actually started playing rumba very well. And even the Congolese who are here, some of them, for them actually to appeal more to the locals, started singing... In uh, local lingua. Like in, in Swahili. Mm. Now, talking, getting back, just stepping back a bit. Yeah, we have spoken about, you know, this arrival of these uh, visitors from the Congo and who influenced quite a lot... Uh, you know, of uh, Nairobi's nightlife. But 
if we all step back a bit, and now we talk about the fan, you had fans who were coming. Did you lose some? Did you gain some? And say taboo, for instance, in your position. The fans of those days, maybe when you were still going out, going to the nightclubs, Daktari, you were going to the nightclubs. What, how, did the, how did this affect the fan? Or how did the fans meet, meet, meet up with this challenge? Actually, speaking as someone who was running a band by that time, you know, later on I was running Orchestra Virunga. Yes. Kenyan fans love Congolese music, up to date. Okay. So the fight was not about the musicians and the fans. It was about the, 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 the Congolese musicians and the local musicians mm -hmm. because they believed that the Congolese musicians were actually invading their space. Okay. I think that's what, what, that was the problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to Dr. think about fans. Um, I think the way one thinks about fans, Kenyan fans of uh, Congolese music of the 70s and 80s and all the way into 90s, I think you just go to go out there and look at how many children are called Franco, how many are called Moreno, how many are called uh, Nico, and these were direct borrowing. I mean, Kenyans, of course, have this habit of uh, something new will be adopted into real life situations. So that's how Kenyan fans appreciate um, Congolese music. That's how much. Yeah, and uh, you see, I'd just like to add, because I remember like in the 70s, I, in fact, like uh, my friends and myself credit ourselves actually to popularizing Super Mazembe. Yes. Why? In the showgrounds, those days, most of our bands played in the showgrounds, and we had uh, Maroon Commandos were big, and Scarlets, and uh, Hody Boys, you know, Namis, you know, the clubs and the DJs as well. But when it came to the, it was the Kakamega show, and Mazembe, the first night, nobody came. But then we are schoolboys. We found this is a free place because nobody, there were, people were queuing to go to the Maroon Commandos. And here there was no queue. We did not have the money to pay. So we got into this and we enjoyed the music. We actually went out to tell people this band is better than even the Maroon Commandos we were going to. <laughs> they found this music. It appealed to the, to the fans. And that's what the fans wanted to hear because and we, what we are saying is that, you know, on radio, it was there. So we knew it. Dr. you knew wherever you are, uh, you know, in your school days, you knew, no, that music, you'd hear it. So these guys are coming here Obvi to be excitement. To be excitement, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So how did you deal? How did the musicians deal with this? How did, did you manage? Did, were you faced out? Because uh, people get the feeling that probably the Congolese influx our local bands disappeared. I think, Tabu, you, you'd be probably to say that, that aspect of, did our bands fade out? Did we get out of town? No, the, the Kenyan musicians did, did not get out of town. They had ways of playing more genres than the Congolese who stuck to, to, rumba. to rumba. So the Kenyan musicians definitely survived. Some of them also moved out of the main uh, clubs. Remember that time, the many clubs were like uh, the Starlight Club yes. uh, along Valley Road. Yes. There was uh, the Hallians uh, mm -hmm. along Tomboya Street. Yes. There was the uh, Parkin, Uhuru Park. Yes. There was Garden Square along City Hall. In the City Hall. So most of the, 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 I mean, the, the great clubs, unfortunately, were taken by the Congolese. So the, the, the Kenyans had to go to hotels like the Intercontinental, oh, yeah, the Hilton, to, so to play it's grill music. Session, yeah, grill music. Yes. It's called grill music. Well, Places well. like Sombrero, yeah. where yeah. they had the strippers, and uh, this hotel, yeah, the dinner hotels, music. Yeah. The Florida, Florida, Florida then, Mad House, yeah. Yeah. on Koinange Street. Was that, was that sustaining enough? Was it, did it really cover the gap that was created by the Congolese? That moving into hotels and, uh, you know, exclusive, uh, say, events? No, 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 no. It did not help because now the jobs were like kind of cut off. You know, there were less jobs playing in, in hotels than in the clubs. There were so many clubs in River Road. River Road to start with, you know. Mm -hmm. We had Small World, Rodia, Congoli, Congoli Bamboo, <laughs> uh, Kaka. Right. And all of them had bands. We used to walk from Starlight, you know what yeah, Starlight? Yeah, yeah. Walk and go listen to different bands all the way down to OTC. And you can imagine how many Kenyan bands were there. 
I remember, I remember a great band was like uh, Super Mambo. Super Mambo. Yeah, Super Mambo. Yeah, yeah. Nairobi Matata. Matata. Yes. Do, do, Nairobi Matata. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. 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 All Kilo the way to, to Ngara. Uh, brilliant club. Brilliant yeah. club. Oh, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. 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 That's brilliant. All those clubs had I, Actually, Super Mambo is what I think became Nairobi Matata. Yeah. Nairobi yeah. Matata. It was the same band. Oh, the same band. Oh, mm. yeah, okay. Mm. On Park, uh, Park Road. Yeah. The, the Park, Park Road, yeah. yeah. Uh, Park Road, the Brilliant was on the other side. On the other side. To play us out is Mapenzia Peremende by Baba Gaston, performed by Orchestra Mangelepa. I was your host, Topiliambila. <laughs> Mapendo kizungu zungu tuwe Tuwana mama Mapezi ya pipi na boyo Mapendo kizungu zungu tuwe Tuwana mama Mapezi ya shule na boyo Mapendo kizungu zungu tuwe Tuwana mama Oh 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 yeah Tuwana mama Mapendo kizungu zungu tuwe Tuwana mama Mapezi ya shule na boyo Mapendo kizungu zungu tuwe Tuwana mama Utakosa pembe utakula nine Mapendo kizungu zungu tuwe Tuwana mama
mama mapendo kizungu zungu toe tota mama mapendo kizungu zungu e mama mapendo kizungu zungu toe tota mama uta kosa yo te uta pata pure mapendo kizungu zungu toe tota mama mama e mapendo kizungu zungu toe tota mama The journey through Shades of Benga continues. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on our social media platforms for the next episodes. Shades of Benga, the book, is available in all leading bookstores in Kenya. Get your copy for this and other stories in full. Mambo Vipi, Mambo Vipi.